welcome to our quick overview video of the Audi e-tron. We're going to start off with the key. It has three different control elements. The first one to lock the door, the second one in the middle to open the trunk, and the third one to unlock the car. So let's get started. We're going to use the third button to unlock the car. We are now going to pretend that we're actually entering a car by opening the door first and closing it again. As you can see, the IC is turned on, as well as the exterior mirrors on the left and on the right side. We receive a notification in the instrument cluster about the profile we're using at the moment and a welcoming message. We are going to confirm and we are about to turn on the ignition and we hear a short welcoming jingle. And as you can see, once the ignition is turned on, the IC will be activated again. Same goes for the head unit and the subunit. We are now going to have a closer look at the different screens, starting with the instrument cluster. We have four different menu items, car, media, telephone, and navigation. We will, of course, have a closer look at those in screens. We're going to continue with the hat unit, which consists of 14 different features, so let's have a look at those as well. We have radio media, telephone, navigation, phone, car, purchases or settings. On the second page, help, user, messages, news, weather, and should you be logged in as a key user, you will also be able to choose the option calendar. We're going to move to the left side choose home. Here we have the choice to set shortcuts or favorites, which will lead us directly to the subunit, where we also have the choice to set shortcuts or favorites below the climate settings. We may also use the subunit to turn off the different screens or activate them again. If we want to, we can also activate the downhill assistant if necessary. As always, the climate settings are used to change the ventilation or change the temperature for the driver as well as the passenger. Below the subunit, we will also find the drive mode selection as well as further climate settings. Next to the start and stop button visible on the left, we can activate the park assist. And we can see that the camera view is activated in the head unit giving us different angles of the camera, which we'll be able to see much better in screens. By pressing the same button again, we're going to deactivate the camera view, and we're going to move on to the right side and activate the parking assist. We will also get to see this in live action in screens. And the button on the far right is the media button. One specialty of this car is the gear shift. We are going to start the engine, and we see an immediate change in the instrument cluster, a different view of the tubes in the IC. By pushing the silver button up a little, we're going to put the car in reverse. By pressing the button down, we are going to put the car back into drive mode. By using the side part of the silver button, we're going to put the car back in the park mode and also put on the emergency brake if we want to. Last but not least, we're going to take some time and have a closer look at the exterior mirrors on the left and on the right side. Both mirrors do not look or work like classical mirrors, but are also represented as screens. We're going to move to the left side and switch between the left and the right mirror. We're going to start off with the left first. As you can see, we can move the mirror up or down, to the left side, or to the right side. By tapping the screen lightly, we can move it back to the initial position. We're going to move on to the right side for a moment. By switching to the right mirror, the left mirror is slightly dimmed while the right mirror is illuminated. Same procedure, we can move the screen to the left, to the right, or up and down. We can only move the right screen by using the left one. Last but not least, we're going to move back and turn off the engine. 
all the screens are turned off, we receive a short goodbye message in the instrument cluster. The exterior mirrors are lightly dimmed. We're going to turn off the head unit screen manually. We're going to exit the car and the seat is moved back immediately. We're going to lock the car by pressing the first button. And as you can see, we see the Audi sign in the instrument cluster one last time. And this was our short overview for the Audi e-tron for today. The head unit consists of the home screen and consists of 13 different items. The 14th one calendar is a specialty, which we're going to talk about later. Tapping the icon will activate the animation. Clicking it will start the application. First off is radio, then media, which consists of different devices, for example, Bluetooth, SD, USB, and so on. Third one is telephone and consists of connect SIM or Bluetooth, for example. Navigation. Phone apps, where we can use Android Auto or connect Apple CarPlay to play music or media. Next up is car, which contains settings regarding the entire vehicle. We're going to move on to purchases, where we can download apps if we are logged in via the My Audi app and are using the key user. The next one is going to be settings where we can change language, lights, etc. We're going to move on to the second page and press help where we, for example, find the setup wizard or a tutorial. Tenth one is user where we can create different profiles or personalize our own car. Messages is connected to phone. And we're going to move on to news where we get the latest news, news section, and you can also have the news be read to you. Weather will give you the weather for the current position or other locations and will also give you a forecast. The 14th one calendar is a specialty which you can only use if you are connected by using the Audi app and using the user key. So you can use your phone as a second calendar and the appointments will be synchronized with your phone and the app. We're gonna move back to the left side we have four different menu items already installed or pre-installed on the left side of the bar and they're all shortcuts, radio, media, telephone, or navigation. You can access those shortcuts from anywhere in the menu, no matter where you find yourself, no matter what you're doing. You can always use these shortcuts on the left by simply using the icons. We can use a long press for the different icons and slide them to the left bar. This way we can personalize and individualize our home screen. We're going to move back and slide down the upper bar, which contains different settings and shortcuts. For example, for different sound settings, settings in general, connection settings, or different profiles. And we are done with the overview. We're going to move on to media. Going to source, we have four different basic settings. We can connect an SD card, a USB connection, an external device, or we can also connect to online media. External devices are usually phones or for example iPods. If we click on one of the profiles, we have the possibility to connect our phone and play our own music on our head unit and in the vehicle, as you can see here in this list. We're going to go back to source and move on to connect online media. It can be used if the vehicle is connected to a Wi-Fi hotspot. We're going to use one of them. We go back to source where we have the possibility of using either Napster or Amazon Music. We also have the possibility of using the SD card, which has its spot in the middle console or the USB stick. And as you can see here, the SD card is automatically connected. Now we have the possibility of playing our own last tracks, artists, albums, tracks, playlists, genres, folders, and on the second page, even play videos. We move one step back and we are going to connect a USB stick now. USB stick is automatically connected. And if we click on it, we see the same settings as we've had it for the SD card. We 
can also use the Amazon Music app and connect Alexa to our vehicle to listen to music. And we are done with media. We are going to start off with a quick overview of the instrument cluster. We can use the steering wheel and the arrows above to go through the IC menu. We're going to press the right arrow and we go to car. We're going to confirm by clicking OK and we're going to get to the menu list. First off is onboard computer. We can confirm by pressing the wheel on the steering button and use it to scroll through the menu. First off, we have range. We're going to move on to consumption, short term memory, long term memory, driver assist, traffic signs. We're going to move back up. Use the menu button to get back to the general overview. We could potentially choose charging next, it's not available right now. Reduce display, and as you can see, the different screens in the instrument cluster are turned off. We're going to move back to the menu button, and last but not least, we could also move on to reset the kilometers. We're going to move back to the onboard computer and range, and we're going to use the arrows to move to our next point, which is going to media, and we're going to have some car sounds coming up for you guys now. Alright, we're going to move back, use the menu button, and we're going to scroll all the way up to switch to media. We're going to confirm. We could connect a USB stick, an SD card, or a Bluetooth device, but we have no devices connected at the moment. So we're going to move back with the menu button to get back to radio. We see a list of different channels we could potentially choose from. So again, we're going to move one step back and we're going to scroll up and choose last stations. We see a list of stations that we've last listened to. So we're going to scroll down and scroll back up and go back. We have our favorites list, the channel that we are currently listening to. No other favorites set yet. So we go back. We have the DAF FM view. And one more step back to online media, which we could use if we were connected to Wi Fi or had a data connection activated. We're going to use the arrow above to move on to telephone. We receive a notification in the IC that there's no telephone connected and that we have to insert a SIM card. We'll move on to our next topic, which is going to be navigation. We see the map in the instrument cluster, different options to choose from, for example, map. You could have a look at your last destination. Different possibilities to choose from. You could set a favorites list if you wanted to, a home address or a business address, and as you can see, we have no favorites stored at the moment. We're going to scroll down one more time, move on to map orientation, and the system offers you different possibilities of looking at the map. We go back one more step. The automatic zoom is not activated at the moment, so we're going to scroll down one more time, look at the map content, different POIs to choose from, a short list of things to look at. We're going to go back. We're going to move back to map, and we are now going to have a look at the different map views. We're going to press view. And as you can see, the representation in the IC has changed, but we can still look at all the different menu points by using the arrows on our steering wheel. As you can see, car, but now it's shown in the middle of the instrument cluster. If we go back, we have media, same thing. 
we can still choose different options in media. Same goes for telephone. Or again, navigation or map. We're going to move back to view. And as you can see, the view has changed again and it's back to the eTron representation. We are now going to start the click through by using the arrow on the steering wheel. We're going to go to the menu button, use onboard computer, we confirm by using the wheel on the steering button, and the range appears on the left side of the instrument cluster. We press OK, nothing happens. So we're going to move forward to consumption. We're going to press OK again. Nothing happens. Short term memory. And as you can see, we can reset the values by pressing OK. We're going to use a short press. Nothing happens. We're going to use a long press. And the short term memory is reset. Next up, we have long term memory. Same procedure. Reset values with OK. We're going to press OK with a short press. Nothing happens. Long press. And long term memory is reset. Next point is going to be the driver assist. If we press OK, we see that nothing happens. So we're going to use the lever on the steering wheel. We're going to push the button on the lever and we're going to activate the speed limiter visible in the head up display as well. We're going to push the lever up and the speed limiter will move up in single steps or move down in the same way. Holding the lever will speed up the process or we can also push the lever and the limiter will go up by steps of 10 or down by steps of 10 as well. We can push the button on the side of the limiter, nothing happens. We set the limiter by pulling it towards us and we can see that in the head up display as well. In the IC it is shown in green in the right corner of the instrument cluster. If we push the leverage away from us, the limiter is turned off and pressing it all the way the limiter sign disappears.